Hello, today I will show you how to convert basic sales data like this into an impressive dashboard so you can start making decisions at a glance. Most people spend hours if not days every week to work with this data and produce basic charts and reports when they should actually be spending their time on analysis and decision making in their field of expertise. My name is Sanjeev and today I will teach you how to go from basic data into dashboards in under 5 minutes so you can focus on what you are good at. So in this case what I have here is a sales data for 2013. I have three columns here. There's a customer ID, the date of the sales and the amount. So the first step to doing this is to enrich this data. So I want to change an ID into something more meaningful like a customer name. So I have another set of data here that has a customer ID, customer name and the group or the category that that customer belongs to. So we want to bring the customer name corresponding to the ID in that list. So let's put a heading customer name. To do that we will use the VLOOKUP function. Why are we using a VLOOKUP function? Because we are looking for an ID vertically in this list. So we are looking up vertically. So that will give you a hint that we will use the VLOOKUP function. Let me just bring this customer data closer so we can work in one screen. So we go, we look up. The first parameter is what are you looking for? So here I'm searching for customer ID, which is in column A2. So that's my first parameter. The second parameter is the table array where you're looking for. I am searching in here, which is this list. And I'm looking for the customer ID. So make sure the first column where you're searching is your customer ID. So I start from the column J and I want to bring the customer name back. So and make sure that the area that you select has a customer name and the customer ID. Also your customer ID should be your first column in the table. Now we want it to become an absolute reference. We don't want that when we copy the formula down, this block also goes down because this is a static block. You do that by putting a dollar sign before J2 and K12. The shortcut for doing that is F4. So when the formula goes down, your A2 in the next row would become A3, but J2 stays as J2. Okay, getting back to VLOOKUP again. My third parameter is the column index number of the field that I want to return. In this case, we started from column J, which is the customer ID, but we want to return the name. So in the table, this is the second column. So that's one, that's two. So let's put two. And the fourth column is, do you want the exact match, which is what exactly we want, and we type in false. And there's your answer. I can double click on the bottom right of the cell which will paste the formula right down to the bottom of the list. Now I want to bring the group also. To bring the group across, we will again use VLOOKUP. But remember, as I told you, the first column in the group should be what you're searching for. So I'm searching for customer ID. Now the customer group is not on this side. For VLOOKUP to work, group should be on the right of the first field. So you have to then take this field and move it across to the other side. So I will copy and I paste. Now I can write the VLOOKUP formula. VLOOKUP 
customer ID. <laughs> Again, my range starts from J. I make it absolute reference by using F4. The third parameter that I want to return is 1, 2, 3, and 4. So the group is column 4. And the last parameter as false. If you find it difficult to remember as to what those parameters are, you can always click on function fx and it will show you the different parameters and as you click it even shows you the description of what that parameter is. What you also see is a result coming up here. So as you go as you busy filling the parameters, you can see is this the result that you're expecting. So if you if for the first row you're getting the answer that you want then you know the formula is right. And again, let's double click on the bottom right to copy it across. So there, now I got data in a format that I can start producing reports that's more meaningful. So the first thing we would want to do is to summarize this data so that we can make some decisions based on it. To see data in a summary format, we make use of pivot tables. So let's click anywhere in my data and we go insert pivot table and we select pivot table. So it's automatically selected your whole range and it's asking where you want the pivot to be. You can either put it in a new sheet or somewhere in the same sheet. Let me select existing sheet and I go to location and click let's say here. Okay, so the pivot opens and as you can see on the top it got all the fields from the data and in the bottom it got four sections. So let me explain to you how these four sections work. If I have to visualize how I want to see the data, let's say I want to see total sales by customer. So I want to see customers here and next to it I want to see my sales which means that each row represents one customer name. So as you see here, it says row label. So I just pull customer name and I bring it here. Okay. And next to it, I want to see the sales. So I take the sales and I drag it here. And there you go. Your pivot is ready. As you can see, the, the under the values, it says sum of sales. So by default, the system automatically decides it wants to bring a sum or a count. You can change it to some other formulas if you like. So from the sum of sales, I can go to value field settings and I can change it to count average or any other value you like. So if I select average, click OK and you see it's been converted to average. The other way to do it is from here, right click and summarize value as sum, which is a quicker way. <coughs> now, if I want to see totals by customer, but I want to see for each group. So I want to see the group first, and I don't want to see all the customers under that group. So what will I do? I will bring the group to the row labels, and I put it before customer name. And now you can see there's cellular, total for cellular, there is consulting, total for consulting and for each customer under that you can see the totals. Let's take it a step further. This is now showing us only one row but I would maybe want to see the sales per month so I want to bring the date up in this field. So as you see each column is for a time period so I will take the date and I move it into the column labels. There you go. But what's happening here? As you see, each column represents a distinct date. We, we want to make some decisions. We want to see summary. So we want to group it into months, not just dates. So what we'll do is in the menu, we go into So we select the date and we go into group field under the options tab. 
and here we say we want to group it by month let's unclick it so it automatically moves with the dates you want to group it by month and there you can see now now I can see total for each and every month what if I want to see per quarter also so under the group field you can actually group it by multiple fields so I can say by months and by quarters so now you can see you can see for each quarter what are the total sales I can take a quarter and if I go to expand collapse say collapse which will show me just the sales for quarter instead of showing a breakdown by each and every one so this way I can see the summary in different formats so let's open this up now that the data is there in the format that I require we want it to look a little nicer so what we're going to do is change the design or the look of this particular pivot so click anywhere in the pivot we go to design and from the pivot table styles choose the style that you like so I would go something like this and it's done is it good or good okay let's now we want to see only the months and the customers so what I can do is oh sorry other thing I want to show you is how to filter it so let's say I don't want to see data for both the groups I want to see data maybe for one group so I can take the group and move it to the section called filter so let's take the group move it up to filter so as you can see the group is appearing on the top with the value all which means it's showing all the data at the moment if I want to show use it to show only one particular group I can go and select that group so there you go now I can see only the sales for cellular or I can change to consulting or if there were multiple items here and I wanted to see quite a few I can go click on select multiple items and then you s select as many as you like okay so now that the data has been summarized we want to be able to analyze this data so to do that we make use of conditional formatting so in this case we have a grand total and I want to see how the different customers are ranging based on the total sales so which is a customer that got the best sales which has got the least sales which will help us focus on the different customers so the way to do that is to select all your data go to conditional formatting color scales and just apply any of the scales so what you'll notice here that the customer with the best sales is now highlighted in dark green and the worst sale is in dark red while all others are in different shades ranging from the darkest green to the darkest red so from this way I'm now able to quickly look at this data and make a decision so from here I can see sell home is my best customer uh, we need to treat them good we need to we can get much more sales from them we having some trouble with Bharini which means I need to apply some more focus onto this particular customer now this is not something that I could have made out from a simple sales data like this but even without the formatting it would have taken me a while to understand as to which customers I need to focus on not just the first one we could see the top the second top the second best is also close to that and I can just see both of them quickly okay so let's just collapse all these quarters so we see just the quarters we go collapse entire field now you can see the totals per quarter okay so after we have done our pivot tables we want to be able to see data in form of charts so if you don't want to see numbers but you want to see trends you want to see summaries then you make use of pivot chart so what will I do is I again click somewhere in the pivot 
I go to data insert pivot this time I select pivot chart so it's the same we selected the whole range I'd say not a new workbook place it in the existing workbook and I click somewhere let's say here so it has created a chart for me but it works the same way similar to a pivot so let's say in my chart I want to see for each quarter how has my sales been for every group so I want to see the trend of sale for every group by quarter which means my axis of my chart in the bottom should show me the various quarters so I can take the quarter move it into the axis field and each bar so I want to make a bar chart and each bar should represent a group which is cellular or consulting so I can take the group move it to the legend field so as you say it says legend legend is a small block that appears on the left here you go that shows you what each field is and I can also use it to now bring the actual sales which is the data I want to see so I want to take the sales and I put it under the values and there you go chart is ready simple so let's just move it here again we want this chart to look nicer more professional so we just go to chart styles choose one of the styles that I like or whichever you prefer and there you go what the chart also does is automatically puts filters for you so here you can choose the different quarters if you want to see data only for specific quarter or you can filter on the group but when you want to show a chart out to the management for decision making you don't want to show all these things so we want to remove all these we right click on the chart and Hide feed list. So I click on the actual button and say hide all buttons. And there you go. Looks much nicer. We can also change it to show different formats of the chart. So here is one which brings the title in for us. There is a different way of looking at this chart. So you could choose from this list as to whichever you find convenient. There is even a format where you might be able to see the actual numbers in the bottom. There you go. So let's just go to the first one, which is the standard one. What you notice here is a chart title. To put the actual title, you can click and type in the title, which is sales by category. By the way, this title also can be made dynamic whereby it could make use of the date that's in the in the source data and from there it could we could write sales by category for January 2013 to 2014. So when you change to let's say next year, it automatically changes those dates. That's something that I teach in my advanced course. So this is one way of producing a chart. The other chart that we most often use is called a pie chart. So for a pie chart, we follow the same approach. I go here, click somewhere in the data and I go insert pivot table pivot chart. We follow exactly the same process. Go to existing workbook and we put a chart down here in this case we want to see the sales by quarter so my axis is a quarter and the sales comes under the value but because I want a pie chart I'm going to go and say change the chart type and I change it to a pie so there you go Let's put it in the bottom.
again we can choose a format that we want to see it in we'll make it consistent with the other ones and we choose how we want to see so in this case let's click this where I can actually see the data in the middle of the various quarters and I go again to the total and change it to the title that I want say sales per quarter 2013 and we hide the field buttons there you go so all my work is done we have the different kinds of chart that are available and we want to now convert it into a dashboard which is what we're looking for so let's go and start a new tab my dashboard and what we're going to do is we're going to actually take this data and copy it across so I go to my source select this chart copy and we go to my dashboard and we paste let's do that for the other chart too copy and we paste it next to it then we take the pivot table let's say we want to show the pivot table also so I select the pivot table copy and I paste it under the charts let's say I want to see all the fields here not just the quarters so it covers up the whole area so I can go back and let's say expand expand entire field and we select this whole range now for the purpose of this example let's just remove the group filter so we make sure that the whole pivot is selected we copy and then put it under the dashboards okay this looks much better to hide this piece here that comes on the right we can go and hide field list so it doesn't bother us anymore okay now because this is a dashboard we don't want to see grid lines on it so what we do is we go into view and we unclick grid lines next we want to put a heading of the company so we can go insert a text box so let's put it here give it a name Africa sales we increase the size center align and now we need to look it more professional so we go to format and again choose one of the formats that we like so let's choose this there you go under that we would like to put an executive summary now this is the piece that you should actually be focusing on and the rest of this it should all be automated so let's see how to put executive summary we select four rows starting from column B put a border around it we select outside border and now we merge all the cells in each row together so it appears as one select and merge select and merge same for the last one the first row we write executive summary we make it bold now let's look at this data and see what we want to say about it so one we could say the lowest sales has been with Barani so let's put that in the summary the lowest 
sales for 2013 was for Barini and from here quarter 1 and quarter 3 had the highest sale while quarter 4 was lowest Q1 and Q3 had the highest sales and Q4 was the lowest and you could highlight this if you like so if you show this dashboard to some executives who don't have enough time to go through the actual charts they could just look at this line and make out as to how the year went and after this we put some action points that we're going to be taking for this so we could say in year 2014 our focus will be on Barini sales we will be sending out our top sales rep to them Q4 sales have been low due to the holidays or holiday season we will be increasing our marketing for the time period and there you go their dashboard is ready now obviously this is the first time we did it so it took a while but what we want to do is once it's set up we want this to now be ready in under five minutes so that we can focus on only this section while everything else gets auto generated okay so what we're going to do is we're going to now use the 2014 data and i will show you how we can do all this quickly so for this i have created a timer this timer what it does is when i click on the start it will start counting it counts every 10 seconds and uh, when we finished then we're going to stop it and see how long it took to do that so let's click on start it has been reset we go to data 2014 i go and select the whole data so now to select a lot of data when you have you go to the first cell and you use a combination of control shift and end control shift and end and that will select all your data so no more scrolling all the way down to the bottom of the list control shift n will end will select all your data once that's done we copy control c we go to my source i go to the top of the list and i paste as you can see the customer name and group have now been auto calculated we scroll down to the bottom of the list and see if there is any extra rows from the uh, from the previous data if yes we delete those if there's some new rows that have been created then we copy this formula down to cover those so in this case we have one extra row for 2013 we go and delete it now one thing with pivots is it does not automatically refresh when you change the source data so for that you have to actually go and press the refresh button so I can go here I can choose any of the pivots or the charts right click and refresh data and there you go here we got now the new data has appeared for 2014 I can go here to the chart heading and say sales per quarter for 2014 and again I need to put the executive summary so I can now see the customer that is right in the bottom of the list is Swift and no more Barini so I can say the lowest sales for 2014 was for Swift quarter one and three still had the highest sale 
and quarter four sales have now actually have has improved compared to last year and now we go and put whatever our message is for 2015 focus will move from Bharini and quarter four sales was low and or, or we can put here the new marketing strategy has helped us to increase the quarter four sales and let's see how it's going we only had two minutes 21 seconds so that's how long it took us to copy this data around now while we still have time there's something more we could do so in this case we are seeing that we had to still go and click the refresh button what if you did not know that there has to be a refresh that uh, we you, it's possible that you might not might not remember that a refresh button must be clicked so the way to do that is to actually put a button in here so when i change my data i put a button here called refresh which will allow me to change or or which will allow me by the click of that button to refresh my data so let's just stop the timer so we go to my source so firstly to create that refresh functionality we will make use of the macro so let's see how we let me show you how we do that so we want to record the steps that we want to take place so to do that we going to go into developer record macro there's a macro says macro 2 give it a different name that you like so I can call it refresh pivots this macro will refresh the pivots on the chart on the sheet this macro exists replace yes because I had run it before so obviously it's giving me a warning and now the macro is recording as you can see it's giving a message stop recording so now we must just follow exactly the steps that we want to take place when we were on the macro so it's one simple step I click anyway on the pivot and I say refresh and I do a stop stop recording now if I go to macros there is a macro called refresh pivots to create a button I again go back into the developer tab and from insert I choose the button control so let's say we want to put it here I can go insert button and I place it here it asks me what function what macro I want to link to it and I select refresh pivots and I give it a better name called refresh now when I change my data in the source so let's say we want change number to 52,000 go to dashboards and we click refresh and the data has now been refreshed so as you can see we have been able to convert the data for 2014 into dashboards and it took us around two and a half minutes only so which is much better than the original five minutes we thought the time now in that five minutes you can actually spend on more analysis and produce even better uh, summary that you can make a difference in your field for me personally even two minutes is too much so there are some things that I teach in my advanced course 
that you can actually take that time down for from two minutes to a few seconds uh, let me just show you quickly what are those things that you can do so if I have to just show you here on the advanced source my source data itself I can make it look prettier so it's not just basic data you can have lines uh, different formats that make it look nicer your headings can have a filter on it so you could from here choose if you want to do some analysis also the interesting thing you see is you it says a b c d here on the columns as you scroll down this actually moves up lots of time what happened is when the, there's a lot of data and we scroll down we don't know what's the, what that column represents so there's a way by which you can actually bring it on to the top also if you look at the lookup function here it does not use a1 a2 it actually uses the column name which is column id so it makes it easy to understand what that formula is going down next to the pivots instead of highlighting all the columns where we were seeing the shades you can actually highlight just specific rows which means you can uh, be more focused you can also put mini charts here on the side so I could see the trend for each customer right here instead of trying to put big charts for those so I can go more granular if I like on down going down to the charts as I told you this range specifically as you can see it says January 13 to December 13 what we can do is as the data changes this range can automatically change to 14 so when the data becomes 14 this becomes 14 we can even change the pivots to actually use uh, sorry not the pivots the charts to use images so here the smiley face represents a consultant and the cellular represents a cellular so you could be more creative in what you like you can even format the numbers on the left which means it does not have to say 80,000 with three zeros you can put some smaller terms so it looks more neater you can actually do analysis in the chart itself automatically so in this case what this chart is doing is it's calculating which is the best month and it goes and displays that month automatically on the top what we also have here is filters right next to it so if I want to see only cellular I can click on cellular and the data changes even in cellular I can just show me only cell home and there you go it goes cell home and when we take all this this can actually come across onto the dashboard so on the dashboard on top as you said we saw you uh, they we could write who the top customer or the bottom customer is this piece also can be automated so as the data changes it automatically changes so now we don't even have to do that even your source that's the last one now listen to this your source you do not have to bring from another place and copy it across we could automatically connect it to the data source like another excel sheet or the database where this information is sitting and as you open the excel it automatically connects there and brings the data across there is also visual basic code that we can write whereby we don't have to put the refresh button anymore so it automatically goes and refreshes the data so you just open the excel and you have the latest data right in front of you all you have to do is go into the executive summary and you type in what you like so you just focus on what you are good at how do you like that so if you would like to know more about this or you want more tips on excel you can contact me here are my details my email is bfree at lifeautomated.co.za and my website is www.lifeautomated.co.za so have fun and make sure you do not spend a lot of time on excel enjoy bye bye